Hey there, Abiding fam, and welcome back to My Abiding Journal. My name is Kelsey Lee, and today I am excited to share with you how I finish a Bible study. I have a few videos here on my channel walking through the different steps of my Bible study process, and if you're interested in watching all of those videos, I will have them linked in a playlist at the end of this video. But today, I wanted to take some time to talk about what I do once I have finished all of those steps after I have gone through and read every chapter and read every verse multiple times, after I have turned that book into a beautiful rainbow of color full of highlighting to help me understand each verse even more deeply, and taken time to really sit with commentaries and other Bible study resources to learn even more about the text, writing my notes in the margins of my Bible, and also in my growth book. After I have done all of those things, I like to take a moment to really sit with what I have learned and try to create a one to two page summary. So that is what this video is going to be all about. When I am wrapping up a Bible study, I want to keep things very simple and easy on myself, so I try to keep my review to one to two pages in my journal and focus on four key areas. The first is a summary or overview of the book of the Bible. The second are some of my favorite verses from that book or ones that I specifically want to memorize. The third are key takeaways that I really felt God was trying to convey to me during that Bible study. And the fourth, of course, is prayer. To start the process, I like to read through that book of the Bible one last time and then go through all of the notes I have taken throughout the study. For Ephesians, I had a ton of notes in my growth book and also in the margins of my Bible because I was following along with a group called Club 119 organized by my friend and fellow YouTuber Alyssa Nalani. She actually is revamping her entire Bible study series, so I encourage you to go follow her so you can learn more about her Bible studies because they are excellent. And for Ephesians, it was really special because I got to design the sticker set that she included as part of the course. And if you like these stickers, I'm excited to share that they're soon also going to be available on Patreon. I'm developing a new faith tier where I hope to share many faith-related rewards with you all. I'm not quite ready to launch it yet, but do know that it is coming. But back to the point of this video... Once I've gone through and looked at all of my notes again, I feel like I have a good understanding of everything I've learned, I then create my page. And I like to do just a basic title at the top. I think bringing in colors and little headers is always a fun way to make these pages more fun to look back on, but is of course not necessary. But what I like to do is create a basic header for each section. So my first one, as I said, is the summary or the overview. And I try to write this in my own words, not looking at any commentaries or any other person's summary of the book. I try to write this as my personal summary of what this book is trying to get across. And this is a great way to reflect on what you have learned and also to provide a great reference for yourself in the future, as well as to test your knowledge and your ability to repeat what you have learned so that you can share the gospel with others. My next section is my favorite verses or the key verses I want to memorize. And I like to go back through my book and look at all of my annotations where I marked memory verses and then pick just a few, three or four, that I want to really focus on memorizing from that book. 
in this case, one of the verses I wanted to memorize was actually one of the verses that I designed as a sticker. And so I had the opportunity to include that on the page and just add a little bit of visual interest. Of course, you could also hand letter a verse on your own if you wanted to spice things up a bit or print out a sticker of a verse that you find on the internet. You can do this in a lot of different ways. You also, of course, can just write the verse by hand. And that, of course, is one of the best ways to memorize verses. So I highly recommend writing it by hand, even if you are using images. Now, when it comes to narrowing down your favorite verses from a book of the Bible to just three or four or even five options, it can be really difficult because every verse is worthy, of course, in the Word of God. But what I try to focus on is what verses best convey that book of the Bible and the central truths about the gospel and what verses also are going to be most important for me in my walk with the Lord to keep close to my heart so that I can consistently remind myself of those truths and also that I can consistently remind others of God's truth as well. So those are questions you can ask yourself. Since this is an overview of the entire book, I also try to pull verses from various chapters and not concentrate too much in one area. So the verses that I selected, if you are curious and want to look them up, are Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, Ephesians 2, 13, Ephesians 4, 32, and finally, Ephesians 6, 11. And next, I move on to takeaways or the big ideas. What are the main points that you feel this book is trying to convey? This is different than the summary that is a little bit more about who, what, where, when, and why. This is more about what you want to walk away with after having finished reading this book. What ideas stood out the most to you? And so that might vary at different points in your life. You might gain different takeaways from a book of the Bible at one season of your life and then restudy it in another season and get totally different takeaways. And that is perfectly okay. And so that is also why I then like to end my time in prayer because God is a present God who is working in us and through us and with us in that particular season that we are in. And so when we read a specific book of the Bible, we are having the opportunity to reflect on God's word through the lens of a season. And so I liken my prayer to be able to reflect on what this study has meant to me in the season that I am in. I also really think it's helpful to spend time praying the scripture. I think it's really helpful when finishing a Bible study to use the scripture that you have studied to pray the word. So for example, I wrote in my prayer that I am grateful that I play no part in my salvation other than giving my life to you. Jesus, help me to walk in a manner that is worthy of your mercy. I want to be an imitator of God who is fully clothed in his armor. And so you might pick up on some of the words and verses that I used in my prayer are directly pulled from scripture. And I highly recommend that you use the scripture when creating your prayer at the end of your Bible study. And that is how I finish a Bible study. I would love to know how you like to finish a Bible study. Do you also take time to create a little bit of a review page for yourself? Or is this something you are going to try the next time you finish a Bible study? I would love to know down in the comments. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely subscribe and check out this playlist on Bible Study for Beginners or my most recent video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep exploring your abiding creativity and document a life abiding in faith, hope, and love.